Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse DePlantis here. I hope you're enjoying our YouTube videos. That's why you don't want to miss anything. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you will know when new content has been posted. That's like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So right now, watch this and be blessed. If you got your Bibles, turn with me today to the book of Ephesians. That's in the New Testament for you people who have never been here. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. I, want to, I love, this is the, my most favorite book in the New Testament is the book of Ephesians. And my most favorite book in the Old Testament is the book of Genesis. I just love this. And I asked the Lord what I would be doing during my day sessions here at the Southwest Believers Convention, and the Lord gave me this. Many of you know I travel quite extensively all over the world preaching the gospel. I've had many people say that I'm probably the busiest preacher in the United States. I'm constantly going somewhere almost every day. I'm wearing out jets and just wearing them out. I mean, I fly more than most commercial uh, airline people fly and all that kind of stuff. Bought almost uh, uh, about six, $700,000 just in jet fuel last year. Just, and that's wholesale. Isn't it nice? I don't have to pay retail. <laughs> I serve a Jewish God. Yeah. Yeah. You do what you got to do. Praise the Lord. And uh, if, you, if you put retail, you're looking at about $1.2 million just traveling, just in jet fuel or going all over the world. And God's been so good and gracious. So I see a lot of things that a lot of people don't see. I preach in a lot of churches, conventions such as this, as well as uh, business uh, ventures that a lot of major corporations ask me at times to come speak to their staffs and things of that nature. So I really believe I have a, my hand on the pulse of what's happening out there. And I wanted to minister on this wise. The Lord began to deal with me about it. And I want to read the scripture. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Uh, I want to start first with ooh, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, I want you to underline that. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now that was wrote over 2,000 years ago, and the Apostle Paul told the church at Ephesus that the days were evil. Think about how much more evil they are today. There hardly is no such thing anymore as sin. People laugh at that, even Christians. Just think about that. And I want to deal to, in my day session. I'll do something different on the, on the night that I preach, but on, in this area of my day sessions, I want to preach on time, our most precious commodity. Time, our most precious commodity. We have such revelation coming down the pike, like they say. Brother Cope has been preaching on the blessing now for a couple of two or three years. The wonderfulness of the Word of God. God is speeding up the time. I asked the Lord one time, I said, why am I so busy? You know, I don't mind taking a break. I don't mind going home. I, I would like to try lazy once in my life. <laughs> I've never done that, but I'd like to try it anyway. And the Lord said, the time, the time frame. And I said, well, why am I doing all this? There's so many people want meetings and they, you know, they, they want to preach, but they're not willing to do whatever it takes to get it done. They'll go if the money's right. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. I heard that from Brother Hagin. and I. I love that statement. I've never forgot that. Think about that. But just the time frame, what it takes to um, get the gospel out, to preach the gospel. And I want to deal with this morning on the pricelessness of time time our most precious commodity because time does not wait for anyone I looked at myself this morning and I tell you what I used to be young <laughs> my hair used to be brown I used to be skinny I like me in fact <laughs> you can eat what you want that's a blessing of God <laughs> no, no but I'm back on a diet praise <laughs> see I, I did this because I had to do a movie Boy, y'all don't believe nothing around here, do you? <laughs> and as soon as they show me the part, I'll do the movie. Okay, it was a bad joke, but I right, I 
want to deal with the pricelessness of time, and I, I want to start with this point. Let me say redeeming the time because the days are evil. People are always asking me, and I'm, I'm surprised at how many ministers ask me if sin's okay. You got to be kidding. I, I'm telling you, I, I, I thought you got to be kidding me. You know, I had one man say, I don't know why everybody worries about if, if a man messes with another woman because, you know, everybody needs a spare tie. I've had that told me. Of course, I rebuked him in the name of Jesus. And if the Lord would have let me, I'd have made him an offer that he couldn't refuse. <laughs> but I couldn't do that. But you'd be surprised that someone would actually say that. I think one time I was at a TBN thing, and Keith and Phyllis, they remember that person, that guy that asked me that question about, is it okay to be, you don't have to be married, you just live together. Remember that? And I thought, you've got to be kidding me. But it's amazing. Now, this is coming from the Christian circles. This is not coming from heathens. I can understand heathens not saying that, but not Christian circles. For the days are evil. Now, write this down if you're taking notes. Great opportunity must be prepared for, not simply waited for. See, a lot of people are waiting for an opportunity. What I do is prepare for opportunities. I prepare. Kathy says, I'm a man with plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I mean, I will do seven or eight plans because I realize that God never changes, but people do. And you have to learn to work with change, even though God's word doesn't change. Great opportunities must be prepared for, not simply waited for. For example, when I began to receive, when I was believing God for the first airplane, that first thing I did was I started preparing. I went and got a hanger and didn't even have a plane. I started looking for a pilot and didn't have a plane. I was calling those things with be not as though they were, so that I would not be caught short when the time, because when God does something, he's, he's never early, but he, he's never late, but he's never early neither. But when he does it, boom, it's just there. And you have to be prepared for that. So he told me when I went to preach the gospel, he said, you redeemed the time. I've commanded you to redeem that time. So when people are in my meetings, people say, why do you have altar calls? Because that might be the night that saves you for eternity. Or that might be the day that you meet Jesus Christ for the first time in your life. And you see, because there's too many people talking about the life of Christ when they ought to be talking about the spirit of Christ. Amen. We know a lot about the life of Christ. Man, but you know, we need to know more about the spirit of Christ. Because if you know more about the spirit of Christ, then you will live the life of Christ. You see, but yet we all know about the, the, the life of Christ. They teach us that all the time in Sunday schools, churches all over. But how many people know about the spirit of Christ? What is the spirit of Christ? The fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, mercy, grace, temperance. The Bible says, and against such there is no law. Why isn't there no law? Because that's the spirit of Christ. So when I tell people, when I redeem the time and make them realize that how priceless this moment is, I tell them about the spirit of Christ instead of telling them about the life of Christ. You know, they want to talk about, you know, the, the passion of the Christ. Or they want to talk about the resurrection. And those are good, don't misunderstand me. And, and how he healed the sick and he raised the dead and cast out devils. That's good. But the greatest thing is, why did he do it? What made his character move in that map to manifest in that way? That's the spirit of Christ. So great opportunities must be prepared for. Not just simply waited for. What have you prepared for? Have you prepared your faith to receive? Beware of not having a habit of faith. Write that down, that'll help you. A lot of people don't have a habit of faith. They just use faith whenever it becomes uh, convenient. But in other words, you should, you should not have a habit of not using faith. Faith ought to be done every day of your life. So I prepare for things. I prepared for this meeting in prayer, in study, and in saying what I wanted God to do. Because you see, I'm just a part of this meeting. You see what I'm saying? All of us are just a part of this meeting, but this belongs to God in every part. That's why I love Kenneth Cope. He don't care who's preaching as long as they're doing what God says to do. Amen. I've had him tell me that, do whatever the Lord tells you to do. He's never told me this, Jesse, do whatever you want to do. Because you see, when you walk back there and you're talking, you're dealing with spiritual things. And if you say something wrong or that isn't right, somebody might grab that and go out with that and destroy their life. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you must prepare for opportunities instead of just waiting for I'm just waiting for a good job. You need to get your lazy self up and go look for one. You see what I'm saying? You've got to do something. When you do something, be ye therefore doers of the word, not hearers, only deceiving yourself. No, you can deceive yourself. Well, I, I'm, I'm just going to live by faith. You're going to starve. Faith work it, but you've got to work it. It work it, but you do the work on it, see. 
So I prepare for things. And Kathy said, you always got five, six plans. Yes, because people are all in the plans and people all do different things. You know, some people look at a glass half full, others look at it half empty. But, and both of them are exactly the same, but it's how you look at something. You see, so when I made up my mind, when I go to the Word of God to study the Word of God, and I have a phenomenal library in my home. I mean, it's phenomenal. I mean, even the rabbis freak out when they come. Woo, Lord, look at this. Look at the stuff this man has. Because I want to know something. I want to be prepared. I know how to talk to a Jehovah Witness. Because many times they knocked on my door. Hello, I'm a Jehovah Witness. I said, so am I. Come on in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a Jehovah man, son. But when you said Jehovah, I said, hey, come in here. And I don't let them out <laughs> till I'm finished. I've had people drive up my house on bicycles and call themselves Mormons. Good, fine. Want to talk? Let's talk. I love to talk. But you got to be prepared to talk. You have to be instant, in season. I would say, you got to prepare yourself for the blessing. Because the first thing, if you hadn't prepared yourself for the blessing and God bless you, you go crazy. You're like them people that won the lottery. You broke in two years. <laughs> Millions of dollars just gone out the window because you never prepared yourself on how to honor money. You need to respect money or money will kill you. It's a wonderful thing. People say, the church preaches again, money is evil. No, it isn't. That's why the church works for it. Picks up evil every Sunday morning. It's called tithe and offering. If it's evil, why are you picking up money? It's not evil. It's the love of money. And if everybody with common sense ought to know that, but common sense is not very common to some people. You just thought of that person, didn't you? Did you, you I just came up and yeah, boy, let me tell you that. So, great opportunity, let me stay on that, must be prepared for. This is the priceless, pricelessness of time, not just simply waited for. So I prepare myself. God, what would you have me to do? I know what he wants me to do. I know when he wants me to do it, how he wants me to do it, and where he wants me to do it. Now I have to implement it. Jesus had 30 years of implementation, well, I said, or three, 30 years of preparation, and three years of implementation. He was preparing himself for the ministry. Now if the Son of God has to prepare himself, I think we need to prepare ourselves. Don't you think? So what are we doing today? Is your time priceless? Because you have to redeem it. Because we're going to stand before God, each and every one of us, one day. And he's going to say, why didn't you do this? I, I, it messed up, Lord, because you didn't prepare for it. Well, maybe I didn't have enough name. That had nothing to do with your faith. Your faith worked. You just didn't work it. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. For the days are evil. So when I see evil, I always think that good overcomes evil. That's why people love those superhero, superhero movies. Because, you know, the superhero might get beat up and punched a little bit, but he comes out winning. Someone gave me a movie the other day called Iron Man. Anybody ever saw that thing? Man, I felt like a kid. I wanted to put a towel on my neck and jump off my house. <laughs> but I did not do, I did that once as a kid. I learned quickly. <laughs> Men don't fly. And I saw that, and I began, began to wonder about things. And you got to understand the undertones of what's happening. See, because everyone that has a message has an undertone to it. I don't care if it's a movie, I don't care if it's a speech. What are you saying? What is the real reason for it? And if you prepared for that, then you can honor that. The other day I had a very phenomenal man come to my home to eat dinner, I eat lunch with me, I couldn't believe it. The ambassador of Israel to the United Nations came to my house. He didn't go see the governor, he came to see Jesse. I don't mean that private, I thought, oh, what, what you want? And we sat down, had dinner, and we talked about Israel. And then the proconsul general of Israel stayed at my, not stayed at my home, ate lunch at my house. Wanted to talk about uh, what do I feel about Israel and, and will I stand for Israel? I said, well, sure. Why? Because, you know, God said, bless Israel, God bless you. So I don't believe that. That don't change it. I've had many atheists say, I don't believe in God. I said, you believe in God more than I do. No, I don't. You talk more about God than I do and I'm a preacher. Come on. Come on. You always tell us about he doesn't exist. If he doesn't exist, shut your mouth, go to hell. <laughs> that's not cussing, that's a destination. <laughs> Does that make sense to anybody? I mean, I mean if he doesn't exist, you wasted, you wasted air, right? Amen. Atheists talk more about God than we do. That Bill Maher guy, he's always talking about the God every, he's always, he, he don't have nothing unless he talks about God. He said, don't exist. Well, how come you run your whole show and your whole thing on it? 
what they don't even realize is God is drawing them and they can't even see it. So you have to prepare yourself to talk to an atheist. You have to prepare yourself to minister life to a sinner. You see what I'm saying? I love to preach to Muslims. And this is what they love about us. We, we, all, we preach all over the Middle East in 14 different languages. Uh, actually, the whole world in 14 different languages, but five different languages in the Middle East. Persian, Farsi, Arabic, English, and Hebrew. Now, I tell you what, and what they love about me more than anything else, an American preacher now, is how my fellowship and relationship with God. And they call us and they say, I want to talk to God like you talk to God. How come I can talk to God like you talk to God? I said, you're talking to the wrong God. <laughs> now, got to be wise. Serpent, harmless, and I don't try to make Muhammad smaller by making Jesus bigger. Jesus big enough by himself. I just let my light so shine. See, that's redeeming the time. God opened up an avenue for me to speak to a man who's probably more religious than most Christians. Probably never missed his Wednesday night church. How would you like to go to a church with no pews? That's what the Muslims do. They ain't got a chair in the place. Just lay on the floor, kneel down. <laughs> you do that in a Christian church? You wouldn't have no chairs and pews? You wouldn't have no church next week. <laughs> they expect me to stand up all week long, kneel down all this time? Don't shout me down, listen to me. There's some things we can learn that are good from other religions. Hmm. So I realized that every person born on this earth is a great opportunity. And Jesus said, go to the world, preach the gospel to how many creatures? All. Yeah, pretty simple, isn't it? That's why I work so much, I guess. All creatures. That's for each and every one of us that are born again, not just an evangelist or an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, a teacher. That's for everybody to let your light shine. Write this down. Opportunities does not come loudly. Opportunities does not come loudly, but it often comes suddenly, taking you unawares. Opportunities does not come loudly, but it often comes suddenly, and you could say stealthily if you want, taking you unawares. I have to be instant in season and out of season in my financial life, in my social life, in my public life, in my church life, in every area of my life. I have to be ready. Constant like that, constant. And I mean, I'm just constantly thinking. Especially when you do host, when you host television. Because sometimes, sometimes you get some people that they can just talk the ears off of an elephant until the red light come on the camera. One time, I tell you what, it was so funny. I was on TV and hosting. I, I, how many of y'all seen me on TV and hosting before? I love the host. People like me, they say they like me to host because I like my, I like my guests to talk. I, I've been a host where I couldn't say nothing because the two guys between me were just doing this. And this one guy said, boy, I'm ready, Brother Jesse. I'm I, I, I got things to say. I said, I, I can tell, man. I said, you got it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw it to you. Throw it to him. I said, well, brother, what's Jesus doing in your life? He said, a lot. <laughs> I said, I'm dying here. I'm dying. I know that's a negative confession. Said, that's it. I'm waiting. He's free. He froze. And you can see people when they freeze. Watch my eyes. They do this. Which means they're trying to look at everything going on in the studio. No, fool, look at the camera. I said, what does a lot mean? A lot, lot. Now, I had 15 minutes with this boy. But I was prepared. I was prepared. So I started telling everybody what God told me to do, and he agreed with me. Because I couldn't get him to say a word. Finally, maybe two minutes before, I guess he got, he got comfortable, and he turned loose. Now he wanted to say 15 minutes and two minutes. He said, I want to tell you something about God's word. I said, everybody close your eyes. He's praying in tongues right now. Let's just, you know. I made it funny, but I tell you, sweat was running down the back of my legs. And then I got, <laughs> then I got <laughs> a card from the person behind the camera and said this, cut the fool off. <laughs> You'd be surprised what's going on behind them cameras. Cut the food. I went, I wanted to laugh. <laughs> it's not easy sometimes. Then one time I had a guest that said, you know, Paul had a thorn in his flesh. I said, yeah. I said, the Bible said it was a thorn. I said, do you know what it was? He said, I, I, it might have been homosexuality. 
Am I right, Kathy? Y'all see that? I went, no, whoa, oh, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, wait. Oh, I mean, and everybody went, whoa. And I could see a homosexual, I'd say, say anything bad and I'll just whip you with my stick. I had to fix that. That was not an easy thing. That was a Hollywood star that did that. <laughs> so I prepare myself. Usually if I go to do a show, I open up that session before that camera comes on. I start talking to them people because I want to find out where the idiot is. <laughs> or what the devil is because he's going to manifest. Amen. <laughs> Opportunities does not come loudly, but it often comes suddenly taking you unawares. I don't like to be caught unaware. I don't like to be caught unaware when the Lord asks me something. I don't want to be caught unaware concerning my faith. I don't want to be caught unaware concerning my giving. I don't want to be caught unaware concerning the safety of my life. People have criticized me rawly for having airplanes. Well, I've been down in three airplane crashes, so I bought my own plane. I know it works. And I told my pilots, if this baby go down, remember you in the front, you get killed before I do. And Jesse running to the back where the blue water in the toilet is. I'm going to close the door and just <laughs> <fries come. laughs> hope to God when I open it up that there's nothing left. And I'm, I may look stained blue, but I'm going to be alive. <laughs> but I ain't believing for that, but I'm just saying. So those boys, those boys are very, very, when, I, when they go, to, and I also want what they did when they got tight rated. I want to know when they go get recurrent. I call those people, I say, I want to know how my boys did. What happened here? Because you see, things happen unaware on airplanes. In fact, I think me and uh, Phyllis, went to, she, same thing ever happened to me. We lost pressure. Now, I'm gonna tell you something, when you lose pressure in a plane at 40,000 feet, it's, it sounds like it's and then the cloud come in the plane. Because you see it's like, what, 50 below zero outside, and you're like 70 degrees inside, the cloud comes in. And then you, you breathe like this. Because there's nothing to breathe. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That happened to her. It happened to me too. <laughs> I felt like a dog. I was panting. <laughs> of course, now my pilots, they got, on, they got on a mask. I got a piece of junk mask. One of them little, one of them commercialized masks. <laughs> Baptist speaking tongues. <laughs> Catholics pay tithe. <laughs> And Jews called Jesus the Son of God, but when that happens, that's an amazing, and ain't fun. It's funny now, but it ain't funny when it's happening. But you know what? If I listen to my pilots, we're prepared for that. Brother Jesse, in the event we have something of this nature, they tell me what to do. How many of you actually listen to what the people say when you're flying on a plane? Look how many people... A hundred. <laughs> Most people sit down there and listen. Oh, thank you, glory. Glory listens real good. Pray. I've been on that plane with glory. Nothing's ever happened with us. That's blessing of the Lord. Because one thing Brother Colton does, y'all say he just walk around, he walk around that plane. He cut a trench around that plane. He just keep walking. He won't make sure he look over there. Let me look at that. Why? Because things can happen unawares. Not, it's, it's not fear, it's just wisdom. See, it's called redeeming the time. Every time we get on an airplane, we say, Lord, we thank you and plead the blood of Jesus over this aircraft. They will come right back to New Orleans and praise you and call your name glorious. Why? We put that protective shield out there. See, so opportunities does not come loudly, but they often come suddenly and stealthily, taking you unaware. So I refuse to be caught unaware in every area of my life. That's the priceless of time. I hate wasted time. What could I have done? There's sometimes I was sitting on a couch and I just jump up and Kathy goes, what? I said, am I supposed to be somewhere tonight? Because I'm so used to going everywhere. Some, I jump and God, da, da. no, no, you're off. The, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I, then I sit down, but I'm still thinking, you know, I want to make sure, Jesse, why don't you just let your brain rest? No. Why? Because they, while I'm resting, Satan's planning something. I believe in resting in the Lord. Don't misunderstand me. But you got to know your enemy. Years ago, they don't do this now. They just shoot you now. 
Years ago, you would have a fight in school. I'll meet you behind the school at three o'clock, right? Remember that? They don't do that now. They just pull a gun out and they whack you, you know, just pop you. But in those days, and if I saw a guy wanted to fight me, and if he was big, I, I, I got a plan. A baseball bat, <laughs> something that called an equalizer. <laughs> and I'd look at him and say, I come to win. Yeah, but you're not supposed to have a bat. Well, you shouldn't be that big. <laughs> so if you shrink a little bit, I'll get rid of this bat. Now we laugh about that. I was serious about that. Why? Wow, I just want to go home and just got whipped and beat to pieces. What I'm saying is opportunities you have to be prepared for. That's the pricelessness of time. Now watch this. Write this down. The real difference between people is not in their chances, but in their ability to recognize their chances. The real difference between people is not in their chances, but in their ability to recognize their chances. Do you recognize your chances? Do you see it? Because I want to tell you something. God is no respecter person. What he's given Harry, he'll give the Fred. But can Fred recognize it? You see? Yeah. Can you recognize when any one of these speakers are preaching the gospel, what nugget of truth manifested in your life? Because you see, God told everyone to say it. Now, I wasn't here when Brother Moore was preaching because I was flying in from New Orleans, but I know he said, because I know God, I know you said something, Keith, that manifested somebody, and I said to you, did you recognize that? Did you actually recognize it? Or did you come to judge it? So many people spend their time in church judging what a preacher says, that they miss what he says. Or how he says it. It has nothing to do with how he says it. It's what he said. And God gave that to that person so that you might manifest his glory. Amen. Let me say it again. The real difference between people is not in their chances, but in their ability to recognize their chances. So I'm constantly asking God, Lord, let me not miss anything. I have a friend of mine, her, her son now is about, I guess, 12 years old. But when he was a baby, I would watch that baby. He would never blink. You know, people blink, their eyes blink. But this baby... Would, his name was Max. Max would never blink. He, I finally, I asked his mama, I said, why doesn't he blink? She said, he don't want to miss nothing. <laughs> I literally watched that baby for five minutes. He never blinked his eyes much. I knew his eyes must have been getting dry or something. But she was right. He don't miss nothing at all till today at 12 years old. He said, he don't want to miss nothing. You see, when you realize that you can recognize something, or if you don't recognize it, and there's been sometimes someone got your blessing because you wouldn't recognize it, and God's not going to let that blessing just rot on the floor. And God is very frugal in everything he does. There's some people didn't get healed because the person next to them got their healing. Why? Because the person next to them was believing for God to heal them, and the person that needed to be healing was saying, oh, I hope so. They didn't recognize that the healer was there. They were seeking a healing instead of seeking the healer. But the person next to him was saying, oh, Jesus, just, just thank you for healing my body. I said something years ago that your spirit can write a check that your soul can't cash. You see, a lot of people walk around with deformed souls. Their soul has not been renewed. It's deformed. Their spirit's right, but they, they conformed instead of transformed. What that means is transfigured. Do you know that word transformed there in Rome? It means transfigured, like when Jesus was transfigured. That's how your soul should be. That's where you live. 99% of your life is in your soulless realm. Yet you ought to be living out of your spirit through your soul to the crucified body. Amen. That's the pricelessness of time. So every time people say, how do you study? Or when do you study? I grab every time, and it constantly. I, say, I may get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, went to bed at 1. Oop, got up. My mind just went to research something, went back to bed, Lord. Because I know when God's speaking to me that if I don't get up and write it down, my soul will forget it. So I have to transform it to make it understand what is in my spirit. Because see, God gave me that for a such a time as this. For such a time as this. This time. And that's a wonderful thing. That's called redeeming the time. There's been many times I've done some things that I never really wanted to do. People thought I just did them, tried to make it funny. No, I'm really, I'm going to tell you something you may not believe. I'm really not a funny man. 
I, God is my witness. I mean, people that know me, they said, now when I walk behind this pulpit, something happens. And you know, there's so many sad people in church. I've never been able to understand how many bound people were when the Bible said, whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Amen. And I'm waiting for the Lord to, uh, to deliver me. What? When the Lord takes these cigarettes away from me, he don't smoke. <laughs> what if he can just take this drug? No, he, he, he don't take drugs. He delivered you the day you got born again. See, your soul is deformed. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You have not transformed it by understanding what the Word said. You see what I'm saying? Learning, let me tell you, one of the greatest things you can tell yourself is no. Now, your body ain't going to like it. Your soul's not going to like it. Your spirit's going to love it. Because it receives, it dictates from God it's himself. You see, there's no duplex in your heart. If God would have wanted to live with the devil, he would have never kicked him out of heaven. So why does he want to live with the devil inside of you? Does that make any sense to anybody? He says the priceless of time. So every day, every second, every minute, every hour, every year is a good time. Why? They call it above ground is good. Because God placed you here. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.